Hey folks, putting together a little video here to introduce my students and their parents and you to an activity I'm going to use to start the class. It's called Paperback Paleontology and the idea behind it is to let the kids simulate making scientific inquiry using a small piece of a paperback book as a fossil. Let's get started. First of all, Students are going to examine a fossil made from pieces of a paperback book individually, and they're going to try to form hypotheses. It's going to be a limited success. Then we're going to get together into groups of three or four. Students will pool their data and put together a presentation to class what they think their data is saying about what's happening in the story. This is where the cool part happens. Students get to see their ideas either reinforced or refuted as other people do their presentations. Uh, and if you happen to be a language arts teacher, this is kind of a way cool way to introduce a book you're about to teach. Big ideas we hope to get across is the idea that evidence is needed every time you come up with a hypothesis. Research findings need to be supported by evidence. And as that evidence changes, your hypotheses have to change. We're going to figure out real quickly that a larger sample size makes life a lot easier. Students are going to go from one fossil to four fossils, and in the end, about 165 fossils, as we see the data from all of my students. We're going to try to reinforce the idea that scientists and people who think scientifically should be respectfully skeptical and that researchers need to publish or present in order to get credit for their, their findings. We'll talk a little bit about how the peer review process acts as quality control. It takes place in four steps. Um, first of all, the students make observations from a single fossil. You'll see a picture of fossils on the screen here and there. That, those are the fossils. They look at both sides. Then they bring their fossils to a group and share their data. And it means that we're going to have to revise our hypotheses for the first time. We have more data, a clearer picture. Teams present their findings and other people are going to either support or refute their findings based on what evidence they have. And in the end, individually, the students are going to get to see the data from all of the classes and all of the students and they'll have to revise their hypotheses yet again. Teachers, you're going to have to cut up a paperback book. It's going to hurt. Just do it. It's OK. All right. Cut it into regularly shaped pieces. I would try to avoid having the title in any of the pieces. Um, maybe occasionally leave a page number on and then students might be able to say these things happened before that. It's kind of a kind of a timestamp. Select a book that the students have not likely already read. It avoids some problems. If you are a language arts teacher or work closely with one, maybe consider doing a book that the students aren't familiar with, but they're going to read later on in the year. If that's not an option, pick a book that's got an accurate film version so you can show the video and the kids can eventually see how accurate their hypotheses were. In any case, we save the posters until the big reveal, until you read the book or the movie is viewed. Um, we need to kind of front load a little bit of vocabulary. Uh, we talk about observations. We, in our class at least, we talk about them as being things that, uh, that you notice. We're going to write down or take note of things we observe with our senses. Uh, inferences are logical explanations. Everyone always tries to make sense of what they hear or see. That thing that goes bump in the night, you know, probably wasn't a monster. It was just the cat. And good luck if you don't have a cat. Um, this activity doesn't rely too much on inferences. We take it one step farther into hypotheses. Our working definition is that um, a hypothesis is kind of like an inference, but it has to be testable. Evidence is anything we use to help support that hypothesis. And peer review is a process where people who are in that same field of study uh, are help out to make sure that uh, work is, is quality work. Students, 
as you're working on this, try to avoid stringing all your data into one coherent plot. It's not going to happen. You're not going to look at three pieces of paper and say, oh, now I know everything and all of these have to be in one idea. They came from different parts of the book. And the chances of the puzzle pieces actually fitting together uh, could happen, but it's not likely. If you recognize the book, don't be a spoiler. Don't tell everyone, oh, I know what book this is, because you will have just ruined it for a lot of people. Do you remember when you were reading Harry Potter and you're halfway into book seven and someone says, oh, Harry Potter dies in the end. And you said, well, what's the point of finishing the book? By the way, he didn't die in book seven. All right. Avoid being too specific. You know, you look at your fossils and, you know, I think when Wendy's walking through the woods and while looking for her cell phone, she sees Black Bear and runs. The Black Bear followers, she trips over a log. The bear's about to attack, so she relies on her superhuman strength to push the bear away. And in the end, Wendy and the bear become close friends. Not going to happen. Way too much detail. The flip side of that is, yeah, don't be too general. Yeah, this is from a book. Somewhere in between, you can come up with hypotheses that can be supported by evidence. Unless you're told to, don't share your data. You'll share your data with your team. You'll share your data when you present. Any other time, you got to kind of keep it a secret. All right, so let's step through this. If you were given these two pieces, this one fossil, these are two sides of the same fossil, um, you can see that uh, the nouns that I saw were coral, timothy, eye, fish, and shore. I uh, saw the verbs fell and hurt, and there were some partial words. I'm pretty sure one was island, but the D wasn't there. One was shark, but the K wasn't there. Someone fell down, but they didn't really get hurt. Well, it doesn't tell me a whole lot, but here's what I think I can confidently say. There's at least two people, and they're on an island. It's warm. I know this because they mentioned coral, and coral only grows where it's warm. I think Timothy's a character, and I suspect it's told in the first person, and I is a character. So in general, I think maybe they're on an island and life isn't easy because someone falls down a lot. I do that too. All right, next step. You bring your fossil to the party, and four of you get together and share your data. So with all of these, you put together a poster, and that poster is going to be used for your presentation. I would like you to come up with a, would like the students to come up with a name for their research organization, and it'd be kind of cool if you could work the name of a famous scientist into the title. Eugene Clark is a, a famous shark biologist, and I saw sharks here, so I thought maybe she should be the name, she, her name should be part of the research team. It'll be up to you. Notice also in the lower right we have our team name, uh, our, our members of our team, because it helps me when I have to figure out who it belongs to. You can see we have a much more detailed list of data. And from these, our group comes up with our hypotheses. Um, as before, um, I and Timothy are on a tropical island, and we suspect that Timothy may be from the Caribbean. Notice over in the other column, there's a phrase in quotes that says fungi and fish. So we think that's fish and fungi, um, which is a dish from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, and we knew that because we hopped onto Google and used the resources at hand. We also suspect that it takes place in modern time. Modern being we've got boats, we've got motors, we've got, you know, probably radios and telephones. Who knows? We know this, or we suspect this, because uh, someone was singing softly in Calypso. Quick uh, search on Google about Calypso, and we find out that Calypso is a musical style that became popular in the 1900s. So we're not talking about something that happened, you know, with the Knights of the Round Table. We're also not talking about, uh, at least so far, that uh, spaceships came down and visited a small planet. Who knows, maybe there's a piece of data there that's going to blow this all out of the water and our hypotheses are completely wrong. That's where the fun happens. All right, we've got our poster. Step three is to do a presentation or listen to other presentations. When our group goes to present, 
they will present their findings and answer questions about the evidence. You know, maybe it will be challenged to see that we've actually got the evidence that we're supposed to have. Um, if you're a team in the audience, the team in the audience will support the presenter saying, oh yeah, you have this, I've got this, and that supports your hypotheses. Or they're going to say, yeah, you've got that hypothesis, but we've got fossil evidence to say that the spaceship landed on the planet Kryptar. And then everything gets blown out of the water. Students are responsible for recording um, how their hypotheses differ from the, the teams that are presenting. And finally, back in an individual footing, uh, we've got all the posters from every class representing about 165 students worth of data. Um, and we take a look at the nouns and in particular the proper nouns to try to find the names of characters. In the case of our nouns here, we also had to include the pronoun I because it was in first person. And it turns out that I, probably a character, uh, was the most frequent. We create a, a chart, a data table, and we can see that I, Timmy, and Stu seem to be pretty important characters in this fossil record. All right. Then, a little bit of reflection, uh, we figure out, after looking at all the data from, we go from one to four to 165, where do we think the story takes place and what evidence do we have to support that? And, and what do you think's happening? And how did your hypothesis have to get revised from step one through step four? And finally, the, 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 the money question here, how come researchers need to have a large amount of data? Uh, so that in a nutshell is is the activity. Um, somewhere along the line, we're going to give a big reveal. This part isn't scientific. Science rarely gets a chance to say, oh yeah, now here are all the answers. But middle school students, middle school teachers need closure. So that's why we select a, a book to cut up that they're either going to read in an English language arts class or select a book that has a accurate video version. The big reveal. And we hang on to those posters until we do that so people can go by later and say, oh yeah, I was right about that and I was wrong about that. Uh, interesting things happen in that part of the process. All right. The whole idea here is to get the kids to understand that it's, science isn't a collection of facts, but it's a way of thinking. I try to reinforce in the kids that I want them to stay curious, be respectfully skeptical, emphasis on respectful, and ask to see the evidence. All right. If you are interested, I will have the uh, a link to the paper copy of this activity on the bottom of the in, in the notes for this video. Thanks for watching.